Forget what you think you know. It's easy to fall into the patterns of what's been written and what is popular. But I believe that you should travel with exploration as your only purpose. We went to Baguio to tell the stories of its beautiful people, their life, their culture and traditions that have existed long before any of us did. We went in thinking we knew this creative city, not realizing how ignorant we were. This is a full documentary of everything we learned and everything we think you should know about the Philippines' favorite mountain city. Baguio is one of the most famous cities in the Philippines. It's dubbed the summer capital of the country and is a gateway into Benguet and the mountain province. It is by no means off the beaten path. I used to pass through it mostly to explore the Cordillera mountain range and the breathtaking beauty of the area. But more recently, I've lingered in the city and found a side of it that I never really saw before. Amongst its fast development, there is an unmistakable rhythm here, one that begs you to slow down and pay attention. Even though it probably looks very different than it did 20 years ago, there is a sense of nostalgia in the air. A tension that pulls it between the highly urbanized center that it is and the groundness of its history. The food we will eat and the people you will meet today are probably the best representation of that. Bag is a really strange city. It feels like it almost shouldn't be where it is. I mean, you're in the central of Baguio, it's really busy. Lots of traffic nowadays, lots of restaurants. Kind of feels like a city that you'd find anywhere else in the Philippines. What makes it really special is that it's really built on a mountain. Once you go a bit further out from the Baguio City Central, you find places like this that are literally built on the cliff. And more and more businesses now are branching out into these kind of lesser known areas, lesser densely populated areas. And you get beautiful views and finally it starts really feeling like a special mountain town and it does have kind of like this allure and magic that is hard to find anywhere else in the Philippines. No wonder why so many people decide to call this place home and yeah it's a strange one. Really one of the kind when you come to the Philippines. The best way to get to know the culture of a city is through its food. A popular first stop for travelers and locals is good taste, for large portions at a really good value. But since the weather is starting to get nippy, we are headed to Luisa's to eat some Filipino Chinese food and hopefully find a guide to take us around. Luisa's Cafe started around 1957, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it was started by my grandfather and grandmother who migrated from China. I would say uh, Luisa's Cafe's uh, best seller would be the noodles and our xiao pao. The noodles as well, we do it fresh every single day. Um, it's a recipe from my grandfather way back in China. Luisa's is one of the oldest restaurants in the city. It keeps a very simple and made fresh Chinese menu. When the temperature drops, it's the perfect place for a copious bowl of mami noodles. There's a reason that this restaurant is still here, often frequented by locals reminiscing on the old days. I am so stuffed. This is kind of like the perfect either breakfast or dinner place. Luisa's is an institution for all the right reasons. It might seem strange to have like this amazing kind of filled chai food here, um, but it makes a lot of sense. There was once kind of like a very big thriving filled chai community. Some noodles, pork fat, some chicharron, some pork, some dumplings. This looks like a really beautiful bowl of food. Mmm, I'm just gonna sit down and enjoy this. Pork stomach, okay. Very clean. And that lining, gorgeous. This is legit a, a really good bowl of food. And these noodles are just so perfectly cooked and they taste so good. Mmm, I just wanna smash this. One of my favorite bites of food so far in Baguio. Mmm. And I heard this is like a hot spot for a lot of journalists, so we're gonna go upstairs and see if anyone wants to talk to me and kind of shed some light as to 
why this is such an institution. I would say the journalists, uh, dito sila tumatambay kasi it's accessible in a sense. They're in, within the business district. One journalist will come, they'll tell stories, share their, st their stories to that, the next journalist, and then eventually naging trend na siya. So where, where are we headed now? So we're going to Aulos at uh, Katipunan Cafe. <laughs> we go up here. Uh, up here. Yeah, that's the Katipunan. They used to have a store there, but it's closed right now. Okay. So we go up What's here. What's this place called? Katipunan. Kat ah, so it is Katipunan. Welcome. Welcome Thank you. to Katipunan. So I like, I like that this place feels like a secret. Yeah, it feels like you need to know like where this is to be able to come here. Actually, this is known before, before actually, but uh, until now, we just don't know why still a secret to <laughs> most yeah but actually this area is known to be a meeting place of uh, packet miners okay mga minero yeah yeah okay and then also the vegetable dealers and you've been in this location for how many years uh, actually my mother started here since 1970s oh wow yeah We don't usually add some spi uh, some overly uh, spicy yeah. stuff. Yeah. What we sure. just do is uh, boil them and then yeah. just uh, we call it one gisa fry, fry, yeah. and fry, and then just uh, garnish. And that's okay. all with the chili. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So this 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 feels like something that more people should kind of come know about and know of, right? Like, and I feel like this kind of food is what people now are are looking for. This is probably early 70s to the 80s. Uh, that restaurants like these were dime a dozen. Yeah. But now they're they're the only restaurants that serves this kind of food here in okay. this particular area in the city. And how did yeah? So how did you find this place, for example? When you're when you're out <laughs> drinking the whole night, <laughs> so you end up in the morning. Yeah. Nursing hangover. So the first thing you want to do is drink a like look for a place where they serve. Uh, hot broth. This is the favorite. This is I'm I'm loving this by the way. Yeah, so it's really good. We normally have sumo or the pig snout. That's, that's it. So and this is just boiled until it's uh, like really tender. All you have right? to do is just slice and then you serve yourself. So you cut yeah. up a piece. Yeah, that's how it goes. And here, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Got that right. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, that sauce really combines it. Quali, quali. Yeah. Um, of pork also. Uh, no or beef. Beef. <laughs> mm. This is the cheeks, right? Yeah. Mm. yeah that's Call the it the uh, ping ping tibaka. Ping ping tibaka. So yeah. cheeks of the cow. Yeah. So. yeah, which are really tender, really fatty. And this is the leg, what? The dila. Mm, that's really tasty. Tinono. Tinono. Tinono is a grilled pork. No, I feel like the, the food is, is, I mean, it's like what you said. That's good. Very simply seasoned, but so tasty. Mm -hmm. And very different from anything you'll find in Manila. Like, forget about it. You can't find a whole pig snout in any Manila restaurant. I, I feel like that's what makes it special, right? Yeah. It is. It's nice to see places that still kind of stand behind their culture and behind the food that you guys grew up eating. If you want to experience Cordilleran cuisine in an accessible and well-curated way, Farmer's Daughter is a great place to visit. It's located beside the famous Tamawan village, away from the center of the city. The food is straightforward, authentic, and presented in a rustic yet attractive way. Get some soup. This looks really good. This is like the whole snout. You got some cartilage in there, you got some ears, you got some fat, a little bit of everything. Mmm, really deep, 
porky broth, which is something you don't often get in a lot of the times. It's deep, it's creamy. It's kind of everything that you want a nice broth to be, especially when it's cold. And that's why I'm always really excited to come to places like this because it's nice to be able to have this kind of food that you would not find in Metro Manila. Next, I'm going to move on to one of my favorite Igorot foods, and that's pinuneg. I think blood sausages, when you think of your French boudin, your British black pudding, your Korean uh, blood sausage. You don't really think about Filipino blood sausages, but it makes a lot of sense. Pork, pork blood, we have things like diniguan and everything. Why not have a sausage out of it? And here, it's probably one of my favorite ones. The chef owner here is actually a very skilled butcher. And you can tell, there's expertise there. And it's not like overwhelmingly bloody or gamey. Lots of spices there, so it really balances out the whole flavor. Mm. It's one of those dishes I feel like is extremely underrated in the Philippines. Still within that meaty vibe. I know you've probably heard of etag before. Uh, so it's a preserved salted meat. Um, its counterpart, or this other style of doing it, is kinudai. Here you have smoked pork. They also make a version of chicken and beef, I think, on their menu. But traditionally, I think it's, it's pork. And yeah, you can taste that. There's a smoker right outside, actually. You can taste that. That has been steeping in smoke for a long, long time. It's really intense. And really kind of takes over your whole palate, which is why it's perfect. There is a Cordilleran tradition called a caniao, a community celebration where a pig is sacrificed and all parts of it are used in various dishes. Chef Martin was curious to find out how their smoked dish is made, so he went out to search for the best kinudai that can be found in and around Baguio. Ate, ano ano yung kinudai? Smoked meat po siya. Smoked meat. Baboy siya. Opo. Sige nga, order ako. Speechless. All right, so I'm so happy na napadpad kami dito. Na try ko tong kinudai. Grabe, hindi mo akalain na this is part of Filipino cuisine. Na ganito ng classic smoking method. Napaisip ako if it's present here. I wonder if merong artisan somewhere in Baguio who can like, you know, who does smoked meat also. I think I can find some there, maybe. Hmm, so good. After my introduction to authentic kinudai in Sablan, we went straight to Baguio City to meet with Ian Bernates, a local smoker who owns Smoink. Ian has been making a name for himself with his kinudai and is about to get his supply for the day, so I decided to tag along. Beautiful public market natin. I know. After a quick visit to the market, Ian brought me to his house to show me how it's done. Here, yes, uh, just really salt and pork. Yeah, right? salt and pork and a lot of smoke. To me, tigas kasi to mga to eh. So, ito yung mga sa smoking process, titigas yeah. siya kasi malilit na part. Mm -hmm. Pero since manipis ang ano natin, kakapalan natin yung slice natin yan. So, I'd say that's around two and a half. Inches. Yeah, around yeah. that. We're right. done with the slicing, chef. Uh -huh. uh, we're gonna salt it. So, I make sure na. Nasa salt lang talaga siya lahat, and then I, I spread it. Like, so it's not buried in salt? No, it's not. It's not. Kasi our, our smoink is uh, ulam siya. Yeah. It's not for stew. It's not for ano, ulam siya. It's not for thin, cold cuts or No, it's not. Slices, yeah. yeah. So ul ulam siya talaga, like you can eat it like bacon. Alright, so when it comes to the traditional preparation, what's, gonna, what's going to be the difference between this and that today? Manipis ang cut nila. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it's really heavily salted. Cause, right. Because that's their way of preserving the mm -hmm. meat. Kasi nga, di ba? Uh, livestock. Wala kang ref. Yes. Uh, you can't butcher a leg. And then just leave everything else yeah, there. Yeah, you have to butcher the entire meat. Uh -uh.
this the second step after salting it you distribute it sa ano na tamang spacing para yeah With its rich, meaty taste and smoky, savory notes, I now understand why Kinodai is such a popular delicacy here in Baguio. My God! As we discovered, there is more to Kinudai and Pinuneg than the food in front of you. In the old days, these dishes were usually prepared whenever a community held Kanyao, a socio-spiritual tradition that varies from one IP group to another. During our trip, we were lucky to have been invited to document such a time-honored tradition in Benguet. Not only did we get to witness such an elaborate, sacred gathering, we also saw how Etag and Pinuneg are traditionally prepared, along with other heritage dishes such as what what. It's an important part of pre-colonial Cordillera and culture that keeps being practiced today. Si Jomar Malintas Mayumis, tubong tublay at saka tuba. Magkakanyaw tayo kasi continuous yung blessings na dumarating, kaya magpa-thanksgiving tayo. Ang kanyaw ay isang festival or ceremony ng aming ninuno. Ganon din ang gagawin natin ngayon. So, na, so nagpakuha tayo ng dalawang baboy galing pa ng nangalisan. Gan sa ito. Tapos, ito yung sulibaw natin. Ito yung gagamitin natin instrumento sa kanyaw, sa pagkanyaw. Ito naman yung ating apay. Dito kami nag, uh, parang dito na inooperate lahat. Yung pag-dress pag, pag ng baboy. Sabot. Ito ang magsisilbing bowl natin, sabot. Ito naman yung kahoy natin. Galing pa ng Kenon Road. Pine woods at saka manga. Ang kanyaw, invited lahat. Kaya pag nakita mong may smoke na doon sa kabilang bundok, Hoy, tara doon. May kanyaw, may watwat. <laughs> tuloy, tuloy! Kaliti! Siti, siti! Yung pumupunta sa kanyaw, yung mga, mga relatives, siyempre. Mga kapitbahay, bayanihan. Adivay, yung magkukwentuhan sila. Ganon. <laughs> Ngayon, antayin lang natin yung mambulong and then we'll start na the kanyaw. Ito yung tito ko. Siya yung mambulong. Tito kong si Tito Agusto. Mm. Oh. Ah, pinsan ko mga to. Oh. Welcome, welcome. Siya pandir siya kalad manangal. Pupli. Si Nanang Junan tatanggo kumpleto niya. Oh, oh suwan kiyag si Mona. Okay.
Galing pa sa sabi ko bilang bundok mga ito eh. <laughs> diba? Kasi nagpausok tayo kanina, kita nila. When there's a smoke, there's a what what. Diba? <laughs> Magre-ready tayo ng pang ano, para sa mga yumao na yung lola ni misis at saka yung tatay ko. Iaalay natin yung itong feast na to, itong kitang sigiping na to para sa kanila. May may prepare, may 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 tradisyon mini ibu kami ibu duit ni pakak memang di tengah pala dok mengunungan ni di Sabi ni Mang Bonong, first blood, yun yung itatago doon para good luck. Swerte sa business, swerte sa pamumuhay. Kusina dapat nilalagay yun. Kasi ang kusina, ang number one na pamumuhay natin, di ba? Kaya pero lagi may laman ng chan.
Ya itu iti mau ada kastil yang tradisun ni. Ya itu iti pangkitan iti ada suir tinti baka ada suir tinti kua nggak itu tiba kabunian ngaku nami. Sudah itu iti haji pengsasan ni buat iman. Beriakan kabunian suir tinti sana semua. Para May mansuta bunjak ninja kuasa saya main. Yang apa nang baboy? Nanti saya bin jauh na. Ma suerte jauh kami. Polong polo, ini saya bin polong polo nang. Maganda lah. So, ini, saya bin dia. Saya bin kurang sah kusina. Ito yung pangpulpog, sabi ng sabi namin ibaloy, kadot. Ito yung iihaw, igigrill nila for the for the rest of us. Pangpulutan na rin. Oh. Tapos mga ito, itong mga to, chachap nila yan. Yan yung wat-wat na. Hindi yan mawawis, walang masasayang kasi iluluto natin yan. Kung sakali man may, may maiwan, kaya nga may kining at saka itag kami, yun yung yun yung process namin para ma-preserve ang meat namin. Magpapamigay kami ng fresh at saka may luto na rin. Uh, yun yung wat-wat na nila. Awan nga rin na eh, boss. Para masunog ni aso.
ito na yung pinunag natin, luto na. I-slice na natin para kakain na tayo. Culture needs to be expressed in many ways. However, a kanyao is considered a private event for the community. Thankfully, these dishes can be found in restaurants around the city, like Farmer's Daughter, and also from Chef Chabi from the Baguio Mountain Men, a by reservation only restaurant that tries to bring Cordillera and culture to the table. get my orders. So they just nent in alak. Thank you. Thank you, Puing. Okay, I'm Chavi, uh, also known as the Baguio Mountain. So okay, yung pinaka maganda kasi ganda mo. Uh, I started off really as a musician. I started playing when I was 14 years old. During that time, I think we had no choice but to pursue our, our dream because at a young age, we had a, an opportunity to reach that dream. Our music career started just me and my sister, Hannah. Grace, Nona said, make 12 songs and go down here in Manila. We will record it and then we'll produce it. So while we were doing our, our recording, we said we needed a band. So after the recording, we went back home here and created Session Road. Thank you so much. So we did it for almost 30 years. It was a magical journey because at a young age living your dream is such a privilege you're happy you're making people happy and you're earning we did like three albums 
Pare, kahit araw-araw ko ginagawa ito, naglilista pa rin. Mas hindi hirap makalimot, lalo na ngayon, no? When the music scene, well, on my point of view, the music scene was going on, an, on its down low. And my tribe was starting to grow. I said uh, I had to have a, another career. Yes, please. This is a lot, huh? Go in the back, please. Let's bring her to the back. Cooking really was my first love. At an early age, we were already around the kitchen. The kitchen really was like a, a happy place for me. For your pork dish, it's called Hinang Lag. It's from Kiangan Ifugao. I seared it first and then throwed the whole batch in its own oil. Patis guy, it has to be salty. Patis and then asin. This is the hinang lag oil. This is the oil from the previous batch of the pork. This product, Hinang Lag, we also put it in jars, uh, clump jars, because uh, in Yangani Fugao, they usually come in clay jars. So back then, they just cook this and they put it in those clay jars, and then when they need it, they just get a portion and then just saute it with their vegetables or eat it. Or. How long does that keep? Well, the humidity there, it's cold, and then because of the oil, it seals it because it's not too it sleeps on top. So it can. Maybe six months. This is like an entry level, I guess, for a pinic pecan. So at least they know how it tastes like. Why? Why the dressed chicken versus like a native chicken? Um, first, it's readily available. Mm. Native chicken for me is still the best. And of course, pinic pecan is not complete without the itag, which is the salt salted pork. For a ritual, they, they put the whole chicken, but if it's for a normal day, they chop, they it, chop up. it up. Yeah. So okay. they just put it in one pot. Music and cooking for me, they are in tune. Whenever we create music and we write songs, we had to make sure that it is cooked properly before we actually record it. But of course, you can't please everybody. There you go, we had the opportunity to travel the, the, the six provinces of the Cordillera. So pre, during, and after the pandemic. Of course, we were there to immerse ourselves with food, the culture, and the community. Not knowing that it was going to be our mission in life. So this is Salem, this is a fire starter. So once I fire that up later, then I direct you there's this particular place by the river in Kianga Nifugao. It was open fire, cooking with the community and uh, getting the ingredients that were available at that time. It was raining the whole day. And before we were about to eat, there was a window. And then I was just watching everyone, the group effort of just trying to, to finish everything. I didn't know why, why I was crying. <laughs> and then when we came home here, I was still there. And then I talked to my wife and I said, Nana, I think this is what we have to do. Let's share those experiences, those stories. Here in the Cordillera, nothing goes to waste from snout to tail. Hence, uh, our main ingredient for this particular dish is the snout and the tail. 
When the time hit me, suddenly my love for fire and my love for cooking had the deeper meaning. So uh, the skills that I had playing with fire was born. So I guess the mountain man was born. I'm a, a native of Baguio, but uh, the culture and growing up with the idea of uh, being proud and preserving the culture, I think was already innate. So when it hit me, it was just all natural to, okay, you have to have like a direction to take if you're a cook. I want to represent the Cordillera. We are so rich in culture. Although our, our food here is quite simple, but the whole production of, of how you finish the dish as a community, for me, I think is, is, is sound. The concept is, it's not just about the food, it's about the whole experience. So I think that's what we have here. Now we're preparing the clam bake. So there are three elements, the wood, the coal, and the rocks. So the idea is to heat up the rocks. So once the rocks are very hot, now we put the watercress because watercress has a lot of water content. That's the one that's gonna steam the seafood. It's a little offering, it's called atang. So before we partake with everyone, we make an offering to our ancestors. Okay. Maybe we should switch. And for like having you guys here tonight. For good yeah, health. For good health. Prosperity. For many blessings. And yeah. I just put this at the altar. Yes, okay. thank you. I'm in the direction of really pushing the Cordillera gastronomy forward because I strongly believe that there's something here in the mountains. Welcome everyone, welcome to our home. Welcome to the Roof Deck Kitchen. So first we had our welcome board mm -hmm. and I like that it's a representation of kind of like various people making yes, uh, producers. Yes, food artisans, especially those we've met during the pandemic. Mm. I think, I think that's what really hits me with the food here. Like when you see it happening, it looks like a lot is happening, but it's really just making the ingredient shine, right? Which is really nice. When you come here, you bring home something. Be like part of your memory. Probably you want to share too with your friends or your kids. So that drives me and I think I'm going to continue on doing that for as long as I could. It's always refreshing to meet people who embrace their authentic selves in spite of everything they went through in life. One such person that we met in Baguio was the legendary Mang Ed, who turned his life around with his famous bacarete dish. main 
namin siya nung nag kami. Pero dahil siguro sa biyaya ng Diyos ay biniyayaan tayo hanggang sa lumaki to. Hello, good morning sir. Kumusta? Uh, okay ba yan? Anong ulam nyo? Baka reto po. Ah, uh, okay ah. Kumusta yung mga kandita? Mga kasama nating mga magaganda. <laughs> Boy Negro ang pangalan ko sa kanun eh. Yun ang tawag nila sa akin, Boy Negro. Kasi sa totoo lang buhay ko sir noon, lukulog ko rin tayo noon eh. Kaya, kaya narating ko yung kwan, bilibid. Pero yung kasong yun, hindi ko, hindi ko ginawa. Napagbitanan lang. Pero siguro pa, pamamaraan ng Panginoon yun para makilala ko siya. Doon ko nakilala talaga, kaya ang buhay ko nagbago na. Bala na kayo dito. Alam mo na yung mga instruction ko sa'yo. No, meron kaming gangwar dito. Uh, bahala at saka kumando. Eh, nagpapatayan kami, nag-aagawan ng teritoryo, nag-aagawan ng delensya, kaya no. Hanggang sa may namatay doon sa eh, pinag-istambayan ko, doon nila ako sinet up. Kukunin nila ako, nasa hospital ako, kapapanganak lang yung misis ko eh. Kaya nung nandun kami, sabi nila may kaso ako. Oh, nagulat ako. Paano kung magkakaso eh, nandito ako siya. Yun pala, set up pala yun. Sintensyaan ako ng life. Kasi murder yung bintang sa akin. Ito kong patayin yung nag-din sa akin. Kasi hindi ko ginawa eh. Eh, luko-luko nga tayo. <laughs> yun pala, plano ng Panginoon yun. Doon niya binago yung buhay ko. Nagdidelayin siya dyan sa palingke, inalis ng Panginoon yun. Pati yung pag-iinom, pambababae. Eh, nung nandun ako sa bilibid, hindi ko kaya yung ulam dun. Kasi talaga yung ulam dun, sir. Puro, puro frustrated eh. Walang kalasa-lasa. Kaya ang ginagawa namin dun, kung minsan kinukuha namin raw, linuluto namin eh. Kaya i-revise namin na para masarap lang ka. Sabi ko sa mayor namin, Pwede bang dumiskarte, Mayor? Eh, nahirapan ako sa ulam natin dito, eh, pagkain dito. So, sige, kung, anong, kung kaya mo siya. Kaya nagpakain ako, sir. Dumadami na ang customer ko. Paghapon pa lang, mar marami nang nag-order sa akin yung mga chapsu, magpapareserba para bukas. Lalo na sa dalaw. Nagpapareserba sila para sa mga dalaw nila. May three years ata nagtit nagtitinda ko doon, sir. Eh. Pero nung lumipat na ako, nadala ko sa Baguio, sir. Hanggang sa naiserve ko na yung minimum ko, doon na ako lumaya. Hindi natin kayang baguhin yung buhay pala natin kung wala ang Panginoon sa ating buhay. Siya talaga ang magbago talaga siya dahil siya ay makapangyarihan. Kaya doon, nung kan, nagkaroon na ako ng conviction, sir. Eh. Yung mga kagagawang ko na doon, wala na. Kagaya nung kwan, lumaya ako, sir. Akala nila nung bumalik ako sa palingke, bibili sana po eh. Nagulat na naman sila. Para nandito na naman yung mga salot sa buhay namin. Ganon siguro ang kwan nila sa akin. Kasi basta nandun ako talaga hinahakot ko yung mga paninda nila eh. Siguro ang dasal nila, sana mamatay na ang tao ito, sabi nila siguro. Nanay ko, dati sa paliki ang tindahan niya, sa gilid-gilid lang siya. Hanggang sa nakahanap ng pagpwesto, andun nagpwesto siya. Nung natikman din nila yung luto niya, naging suki na namin lahat yung sakarnihan. Kaya doon na ako nag-istamba eh. Doon na ako nagkaroon din ng interest na magluto eh. Nung sinubukan ko magluto, linuluto ko sa bahay. Sa kapatid ko, dinadala ko doon. Mayroon din akong ihawan doon sa gilid doon. Mga papaitan, dinuguan. Yung mga tao ron, kilala rin ako kasi luko-luko tayo. Eh. Pag tinawag ko sila, oh, hindi na ako magdidelay siya sa inyo. Ito, legal na. Pero magbayad din kayo, sabi ko. Isang hinahanap nila dito ay inihaw na may sausawan na dugo. Kaya nung naisip ko itong pwesto pala yung nanay ko na nagsarahan na matagal, binuksan ko yun. Dito sa slaughter, sir, itong pwesto na ito sa baba. Siyempre yung mga customer ng mother ko, nahati pumunta sa kanila. Punong-puno yung kwan nila. Kahit magtawag ako, sir, subukan nyo naman dito, tikman nyo naman yun. 
tinatawanan lang ako. Ilabas ko kaya itong luto na ito. Yun na yung bakareta, sir. Sabi ko, sir, subukan nyo kasi ito. Baka magustuhan nyo pag matikman nila. Oh, pretty taste ko, sir. Pag, pag, pag matikman nila, mo, dito na sila kakain. You know? Hanggang sa lumakas na. Artista na wala sa pelikula. <laughs> Yes, my uncle Eddie. Yeah. Nice to meet you, Erwin. Erwin, nice to meet you. Official recipe, this one. So this is the famous bakareta. The restaurant was basically built on this dish. And there's always a taste when you know a dish has been made over and over and over again for years and years. A perfected bite. Come straight up. Butt and balls? Yeah. I like it. <laughs> Sounds sexy. I'm more of a butt man myself, but I've been known to eat balls from time to time. <laughs> Thanks, Harold. I didn't realize I was going to eat balls today, but appreciate it. First thing in the morning. Yeah. Mm. These are the, probably the best balls I've had. <laughs> That's really clean. How do you call this? Kinuno? Kinuno. 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 Yeah. Uh, Grill. Grilled. You dip it or you yeah, put you the dip, sauce you here? Dip, you dip. Okay. Mm. Still really crunchy. And that blood sauce is really nice and developed, which is nice. Ngayon, sir, nagpapasalamat ako sa Panginoon dahil sa talento na ibinigay sa akin. Kaya nagkaroon ng mga branches dahil sa kanyang biyaya. Talagang pag magtiwala lang tayo sa Panginoon at sundin ng kanyang kaluban, makakamit natin yung kanyang pagpapala. Siyempre, laki pa natin ng sipa at tiyaga, tuloy-tuloy na. Dati naging loko-loko, pero dahil sa biyaya ng Panginoon na binabot tayo, wala na yung dating pagkatao natin. Kaya ang ginagamit ko ngayon ay Mang Ed. This really, for me, represents kind of like what Baguio is all about in terms of the converging of cultures, of people, of artists. Yeah. Baguio is brimming with art, from galleries to museums to compounds like Ililika. Food is a form of art, but as we learned with Chef Chavi, so is music. With Baguio being a creative city, it's only natural for homegrown artists such as Dilao, who recently went viral with their hit, Uhao, to thrive. Naririnig ko lang yung sarili ko. Tapos wala na akong pakialam kung maayos ko pa siya makakanta. Wala talaga akong pakialam. Gusto ko lang kung paano ko siya nararamdaman kantahin ngayon. Tapos blanco lang lahat. Habang blanco yung isip mo, tapos kinanta mo yung kanta mo, tapos tapos na. Wala, ka, wala pang ibang tumatakbo. Hindi mo iniisip kung may, may naghihiyawan ba dun? Or may, may pumalakpak ba? Hindi mo may isip yun. Parang bila na lang, pagbukas ko ng mata ko, biglang lalakas yung sound. Now, what I love about working with them is that they always challenge me to become a better producer. Most of their songs changes mid-song and then switches uh, faster, goes slower, something like that. And then they want to add different elements and all to, to try to always be unique. So that's what's really nice about it. Intro. Intro, intro. So they always try to make um make their music an experience. Barya, barya, lang po sa umaga anya ni kaloy na habang buhay ng mamamasad. So Dilaw is crazy. When you look at him live, he like does these crazy actions and his his expressions. But then when you get to meet him, he's like the sweetest person you've ever met. I think V is 
the brains behind the Lao. Uh, v is like the guy who pushes the man in a certain direction. It's Leon, uh, he's a really good guitarist. And so you go at first you might feel a bit intimidated by how, how he is. Wayne, he's actually an amazing singer. Well, he's not really a bass player before the Lao. He devoted lots of time into learning the bass just to play for the Lao. Toby is one of my closest friends, and I believe he is one of the best drummers in the Philippines, and I cannot record the song without him. So Anne, uh, she's a really hard worker, I would say. So when Anne entered the band and joined, I think she was the missing piece for the band. The band needed someone who would learn how to do the programming for live and all of this and look for all the electronic elements, how to do it live. And she really worked hard and, you know, put her heart into it. And so like from meeting her a year ago and to now, she plays better keyboards. Like, wow, like she's really good now. And even the way she programs everything. So like every performance that the Loud has, there's always a different element. They want to make sure that it sounds different every time. And so probably V contributes to that. And then N just makes it work. And then it's like magic when you watch them live. It definitely feels like such a different world on stage, yo. Like once we get on stage, the whole band just gives each other high fives, helps each other up, and it's like, oh, and game, game. That was, everything just like, clears once we start playing. Ang sarap kami ng kanta, medyo chill lang. Ito yung latest natin na release. Ang dami niyang version sa Spotify, isa nga sa YouTube. Wow, fuck eh, fuck. Labels. Anyways, ang title na ito ay Uhaw. Para sa lahat ng uh, may love life, kung wala man, pwede gin, pa rin naman. Gin, gin na lang. Gin na lang, oo. Oh. The one that took the longest was like the travel from here to Malit. A big reason I'm the artist and musician that I am today is because of the community I've grown around. Like, you know, I've, bag is great. Like, it's always gonna be cold, it's always gonna have pine trees, but what I think really makes the city is the community you're around. Especially for me, growing up in like an art family where my parents were in the art field, all my titos and titas were artists as well. So having all these people who are really grounded and really expressive with their creative side, like, it showed me how I could be free if I found an art form for myself. Like, you know, seeing um, my dad and his friends do their plays as a kid, going to all my titos and titas exhibits growing up. It was really fun because you'd see all these artists, like, in their field being great at what they do. And I think seeing that growing up in my community is a big reason I'm still super connected to Baguio right now as a city, as a community, and everything in between that. <laughs> dito, dito ako lumaki. Tapos andito yung mga, syempre yung friends, family, parang ang daming mga kwentong nangyari dito. So yung mga kwento na yun, mga memories, malaking sangkap yun dun sa parang napaka sobrang makabulahan ng mga kanta ng mga nasusulat namin or sa mga yung mga thoughts na pumapasok sa isip ko parang inspired ako kapag like dito sa Baguio As a musician you dream of like performing having people being fans of your music or listening to your music at least and it's hard because like you'll always like fucking try to get your art out and have people listen to your art and like a lot of times it doesn't fucking happen like a lot of times pour your heart and soul into a piece of music you release it and your mom and dad like it you know that's all you get so while you're going through that it kind of feels like it's always like time to give up because it sucks pouring your heart and soul into that 
But there's always like that little piece of you in the back of your mind that tells you like, that's gonna fucking happen. You know? like, just like wait about it. And having all of this happen around us is, it's kind of like validation for a dream, you know? Like, fuck yeah, you're right for dreaming, you're right for trying. You're like, not exactly there yet, but you know, you're on the way. It's nice to be on the way. How or thirst. May we never lose that need to find out who we truly are and what we're made of, to allow your physical need for sustenance to shape us through every step, every mouthful, every conversation, every dance, every song. Here's to being thirsty in the best of ways. Mm -hmm.